Hey there, and welcome to hair section three. In this section, we're going to be working with facial hair, and uh, that's why we have an image of our beautiful Alex here. Um, we're gonna be doing two things. We're gonna show you how to remove facial hair, and we're also gonna show you how to add facial hair. Super, super fun. All right, let's go ahead and create a new layer, and uh, we're gonna talk about removing and um, basically retouching facial hair. So some facial hair like this stuff, I generally leave that sort of thing on a photo. Doesn't look bad, um, really don't mind it. This sort of thing, um, if the mustache was a little bit more full, maybe I would leave it. But in this case, it's kind of just like, um, it's a little too sparse uh, to work. And then oftentimes you'll have things like this on the, on the bottom there. Um, on the bottom there looks good, but maybe I'll just clean some of these things up. The general idea with retouching is just clean up the things that kind of bother you. Like the little thing in his lip bothers me. All right, so create a new layer here. We're going to be using the patch healing brush tool. Sorry, this is the spot healing brush tool. Make sure your settings are set to content aware, normal, and sample all layers. Okay, then our job is to zoom in and paint over the hair. All right, so removing facial hair, you can see relatively easy. Basically, I'm just painting over the hair. And while this might be time consuming, it is definitely not brain consuming. It's not gonna require much of your mental energy to do this, just painting over little hairs and things like that. Now also keep in mind that I'm zoomed in here to 200%. So, you know, if if you do see something that's like, oh, that skin texture doesn't look exactly like the skin texture next to it, I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. But oftentimes it really doesn't even matter, um, especially if you're zoomed in at 200% because if you zoom out to like a regular viewing distance, you will not even see that stuff. All right, cool, there we go. So let's just go ahead and zoom out and see what that looks like there. All right, yeah, actually I do see that a little bit, don't I? Yeah, definitely do. All right, so what we're gonna do is on a new layer right above that, I'm just gonna grab my clone stamp tool. So S for the clone stamp tool, We'll sample this area and then paint right around it. All right, we'll choose a nice soft edge brush for this. All right. All right, and if you wanna use the regular healing brush tool, you can always sample skin texture. Like for instance, I can sample this skin texture here and just paint on top of that. Just be sure you're set to sample current and below. All right, you know what? My consensus is that the regular healing brush tool is the way to go. So let's forget about the clone stamp for now. Forget about the spot healing brush tool. The regular healing brush tool seems to be the way to go because you can choose your sample point. In other words, I can choose this point by holding Alt or Option and clicking there and then painting right over top of the hair. That way I'm sure to get the right skin texture over top of where the hair was. And the healing brush tool is going to take it take care of matching the color for you. So basically you're choosing the sample or the texture and the healing brush tool will take care of the color. All right, looking good. Okay, we can do the same thing here. Sample right there and simply paint it away. All right, incidentally, this is the tool we'll be using quite a bit to retouch skin. It's just very good at removing blemishes. And in this case, the hair is small enough, get rid of that thing too, that I would, I would consider it a, a blemish, basically. All right, little areas like this too. Yep, just our healing brush tool, working wonders, day in and day out. It's one of the best tools in Photoshop, in my opinion just works very well. All right, cool. I could spend all day going in and fixing all these little pores and things like that in his skin. We're not gonna do that. We'll do that later in our skin retouching section. All right, so you wanna kind of zoom out. If things look good, you're good to go. If you notice any areas that you're like, eh, that could be a little bit better, no big deal. Just paint right over them. All right, so that's removing. Let's go ahead and group those show you the before and the after with that. All right, so again, the consensus is, let's just use the regular healing brush tool. 
All right, so that is how we remove hair. Now, what about adding hair in Photoshop? Well, not that difficult to do either. What we're gonna do, we're gonna show you how to add facial hair. Uh, I'm gonna choose black as my color, and now I just wanna choose a brush that's really nice and small, and my goal here is to create one single hair. So, create one hair, I want it to look a lot like it should actually belong on this face. Okay, so something like that. All right, so if I use my move tool, now we have this hair, looks like it's filling in quite nicely. Okay, now that we have that hair, what we're gonna do is create a new layer underneath it. So Control or Command, click on your new layer icon. I'm gonna make a marquee selection tool here, or a, mar a marquee selection right around that hair. I'm gonna hit Shift Delete, and I'm gonna fill this with white. Okay, so we have a white background with a black hair on it. Now we're gonna go to Edit, and then down to Define Brush Preset. I'm gonna call this Facial Hair. There we go. And now we're gonna have a brush that just looks like that one piece of hair, which is great. So if I hit B for the brush tool and I right click, go to all the way to the very end of your brushes. In this case, I don't have a ton, but we'll click on facial hair. There we go. And now every time I paint, it's gonna look like that hair. So our goal now, let's go ahead and we don't need either of those layers anymore. Our goal now is to make our brush a lot more random. So we're gonna to go to window and then down here to brush. Let's go ahead and click on shape dynamics. I wanna turn my size jitter up. This is gonna make some of these small and some of these low, uh, some of these small and some of these large. We're gonna bring our angle jitter up and I'm gonna flip the X and the Y jitter also. So these hairs are now, you can see, totally, totally random. Next I'm gonna turn on scattering and we're gonna go ahead and bring that up. So as I paint around, these hairs aren't necessarily close to my brush, they're scattered around. We'll click on both axes and they really will scatter quite a bit. So we wanna turn that all the way up. There we go. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to click on transfer. All right, and our flow jitter, I want that to be off our opacity jitter. I wanna go ahead and turn on. So some of these are gonna be lighter, some of these are going to be darker. That works pretty well. All right, now the hair is still close it's still too close together, right? So we're gonna go to our brush tip shape and I'm gonna bring up my spacing. So now we're painting less hair. All right, and then the final thing that I wanna do, you can see all the hair is kind of painting, pointing up and down now, right? Although it does look like facial hair, looks great. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to shape dynamics and here where it says angle jitter, I'm gonna turn the control to direction. And this is going to change based on the direction that I actually start painting with my brush. So you can see, let's just start painting around. You can see these are actually spiraling outwards from the center. Notice how these are all kind of facing the same way. If I paint from left to the right, these are all facing like up and down. These are all left and right. All right, and if I start painting around, that's what's gonna happen. So if I paint with the direction of the hair, let's say we paint in, in this direction, it's good, it should wind up painting facial hair in that direction, which is exactly what we want. All right, there we go. And now we're painting facial hair on our subject, which looks really, really good. All right, we'll go ahead and fill this in a little bit more. And because we have all that variation included in the actual brush, it looks a lot more real than if we just grabbed a standard brush or whatever, because it is actually painting in with variation. All right, let's go ahead and delete all that stuff. And there we go, that's painting facial hair on our subject. Now, if we zoom in, sometimes we wanna lower the opacity just a little bit to help it blend in. All right, cool, and that's pretty much all we need. So if I wanted to create a new layer and let's just zoom out here and see about putting some facial hair on his head, we could do that as well. Let's try, bring up our spacing here. All right. Now, this is actually not how I would normally do the hair on the top of his head. I would choose to create a hairbrush that actually looked 
more similar to head hair, make it a little bit more fine and less curved. But you can see with basically the same idea here, you can add hair to just about anywhere you want. And now I'm just gonna choose my eraser tool and erase floating hair, because gravity exists. <laughs> nice job on the hair, man, but it's like totally floating away. Um, there we go, and we just added some more hair to our subject. All right, super cool. So there we go, guys. This is our original image, how to remove some facial hair and add other facial hair. And we can see this does look a lot more clean than the beginning. I actually like it quite a bit. All right, and we don't have to worry about flyaways here, or frizz or anything like that because we've taken care of those. Now, if you have a brush that you really like and you're like, yeah, this makes great facial hair. I wanna save this forever. Just go to this menu right here in your brush. All the way in the top right, you'll see a menu option. Go to new brush preset. All right, and we'll save this as facial hair final. There we go. And I'll include this with your download of this tutorial. So if you don't wind up making it yourself, no big deal, you still have it. All right, guys, and that concludes working with hair. So you can see we worked on four images in this section. Let's just go over the before and the after with all four images so you guys can get a good idea of what we learned. All right, we started here with Nazarene. This is the before and the after. We learned how to shape hair as well as how to add hair color. Really, really nice. And how to fill some hair in here on the bottom. All right, next we worked with Aaliyah and we worked on balancing hair color from one side to the other. And we even worked on adding a red underglow, which in this case, I think is a little too saturated. So we're just gonna bring this a little to the left. It's gonna make it look more realistic there. All right, we also showed you how to darken her eyebrows. Beautiful. All right, now in this picture of Leah, we changed, her sh changed the shape of her hair quite a bit. We used the liquify tool to do that. And we also did a great job color matching this area to the rest of her hair. Beautiful. And then we went in the pen tool and showed you how to clean up the back. All right, and then our image with Alex, we showed you how to remove some of the facial hair we didn't want and how to create a custom brush to then add our own facial hair. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next section.